Hello and welcome everybody to another fine episode of Behind the Counter. I'm your host Rich Stambolian and with me as always is the Billy Gun to my Jesse James, Jonathan Adler. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. I, I'm really <laughs> tired. <man. laughs> I'm sorry. Does that, that? I'm the really gun. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ass. They're equal. They're equal. They're equal. They're equal. They're equally important. Than they are. New Age Outlaws. He with the muscles. Yeah, he's, you know, <laughs> they're cool dudes. A <laughs> couple of cool guys. Can we do that who over? Who repeat themselves over and over again. <laughs> uh, all right, Let me explain why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't know. <laughs> but oh, he uh, did I tell you about this? I um uh, the other day I tweeted um Road Dog and asked him if he ever met anybody that did know, and he responded no. <laughs> 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 it made my night, man. I freaked out. I I find it hard to believe that he's met so many people and no one knew. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, hey, somebody had to know. No, maybe Vince. What was the question? I forgot. Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, well, what what don't they know? <laughs> hey, what, I, that that's, the, that's the thing. I'll ask him next time. Like, what don't they know? What don't everything. Everything. The bo- where the bodies are buried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm right. in a lot of trouble, brother. <laughs> 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 oh man, nobody asked him. He was like he was like the, the chief in um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> nobody talked to him. <laughs> mm, juicy food. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So we're back. Um, it's Friday uh, mm. in our usual time slot. <laughs> this is where you can find us every week. Um, it's cold outside. We're in New York, and um, that's about it. It is pretty cold. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got some cool comic stuff coming at you, a little feature later on, and some books of the week. Um, you know what's blowing my mind, man? Uh, which what's, I, I what's find, blowing your mind? I find uh, completely fascinating, and uh, thank you. It, uh, <laughs> it, um, it's a little closer. That they're close. They're, they're, uh, they're canceling those six DC books, and they're coming back with that Earth 2 book, but they're introducing um, uh, Helena Wayne. Not Helena Wayne. Uh, yeah, Helena Wayne. Huntress, Huntress, uh, as and like Power Girl from Earth Two. Um, I hate when they do this. But they're reintroducing uh, convoluted continuity into like the clean slate of like let's throw some spice in it. And mess this is how they're up. gonna do it. I was thinking about this uh-huh. the other day that they that Earth Two is gonna be yeah. their weird segue into like the stuff that's forgotten. Okay. All the crap they're not using, mm-hmm. they're gonna you know the convoluted stuff they're gonna have on Earth Two. They're gonna do on Earth Two. You think they're gonna do like a like kind of like a reverse um, Infinite Crisis where everything's gonna come to a head and then. It's gonna be like the super, like, uh, like the regular Superman is gonna show up. You mean all the stuff they did before? Yeah, <laughs> in regular crisis, yeah. probably. I, I th- yeah, I think they're probably gonna run to the same problems they did before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you'll get a great temple Superman as like a. Mm-hmm. And issue six uh, reveal and like <laughs> Batman with like a, th- a thousand kids. Yeah, uh, well, they, they, they can they can keep Batman the same. Yeah, but yeah. I think there'll be another Batman on that Earth too. Yeah, because you know, it is, it is does Earth two mm-hmm. exist in a different universe or does Earth two exist in like it's right next door. Well, wasn't wasn't one of the concepts for Earth Two was that it was on the other side of the sun? Yes, and they just like spun yeah, around. It's another planet other, in yeah. our gal- galaxy. But then uh, with a whole Inf- other planet with Infinite Crisis, it it was the the fifty two universe. It was like fifty two parallel worlds where all these weirdos live, and that's it. Yeah. It's a nice round number for fifty two. Yeah, um, um, but it was a good idea. I mean, I just don't. I just think that they're going to be kind of. Uh, that's gonna be the world where it's been around for a while. Right. It's, you know, they'll have World War II superheroes, mm-hmm. and they'll have because uh, they're not. I think there's a specific reason why they're not calling it JSA. Okay, I think they're gonna try and do you know other stuff with it, like mm-hmm. uh, you know, do the Golden Age. What else? Like if they're doing Helen and Wayne, and mm-hmm. you know, that's they're gonna have the other Huntress, you know, Huntress version, the original version, and the Bat and Batwoman too. Batwoman and Cat. No, no, they'll, and Catwoman. They'll yeah. have Power Girl as the other. Uh, yeah. Other Supergirl. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Uh, I, part of me kind of makes like I, like a weird conspiracy theory that popped in my head is uh, if this is their plan to reintroduce like the DC universe, like the old DC universe down the line, which they may not maybe talking out of my ass right now. But if they do it, and then like within let's say a year or two, uh, they're gonna dominate sales again because then you're gonna have all these beautiful number ones again with all your favorite characters no, coming back. I hope you they know, don't do that. I think once is <laughs> enough. Yeah. Um. The, the new new fifty two, and they 52. love they love that number the 52. concept of fifty two. They love that. Yeah, they mm-hmm. repeated the fifty two thing a yeah. thousand times over. Yeah. They've done weekly books. They have the uh-huh. fifty two new books. I feel like by the end of the year they're gonna have about uh, twenty thirty books, <laughs> two books, <laughs> twenty five books. books. Superman, Batman. That's it. No, Superman and Justice mm-hmm. League. Yeah. Or Batman just <laughs> Batman the outside is Batman. He's gonna, Batman's gonna be the Wolverine of the DC <laughs> universe. He just shows up in every book. He needs claws. He d- uh, they're gonna reintroduce the amalgam guys. Was, <laughs> was Dark Claw? Dark Claw. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm a millionaire, bub. <laughs> that's such a crazy concept. <laughs> that stuff, that that stuff was such a forgotten gem. Yeah. It, it was good though. Yeah. There was a lot of good teams on that. Hmm. Super Soldier was really good. Super Soldier was awesome. Um, Iron Lantern was Iron good. Lantern was really good. Metal Men was really good. Yeah. Uh, there was good some good stuff in there. Was there was the, the the daughter of the Riddler too? I think that. Uh, or the that was some a jade or some Green Lantern, yeah, just like the Asian Green Lantern. That was the other one. That was the one where they made the very literal DC uh, world, where it's like yeah. Batman is li- like literally a like a man bat character. I forgot, yeah. They had green. They had Green Lantern, which is like an Asian woman mm-hmm. that walked around with a Green Lantern. There was like the f- oh, what? There was like weird ones. Like Superman, I think, was like a gigantic robot or something. <laughs> He's the Superman. I'm Superman. Uh, and the other thing that they're doing is that uh, we didn't we didn't mention this last week, but DC unveiled like a new logo. I wish I sent you a graphic about it, but uh, you can look it up online. Uh, and it's really crappy. I don't like it. Uh, I I kind of like the idea of it's a constantly rotating thing, so it's going to always look different mm-hmm. depending on which book it's on. That's interesting. Uh, it's you know it's kind of like a, they call it the flip. So right. it's kind of revealing. So, so they showed one with like you know the Joker from Arkham Asylum, and they showed the peel. The peel. <laughs> uh, they showed the uh, uh, there was a Watchmen version, which probably unveiled mm-hmm. during the Watchmen Two stuff. Um, yep, he's Andrew's got it. Yeah. Um, but it's like it's just very uninspiring. It doesn't look like a uh-huh. it looks like a a uh, logo for a pharmaceutical company as opposed to a mm-hmm. comic book company. It doesn't look very fun. Um, I I understand the idea behind it, but I'm not a big fan. Yeah, and DC always had some cool logos too. You know, like go back to the original yeah. Bullet. The Bullet was great. Yeah. Um, the '80s. Uh, you know, like the the one that everything was inspired from. Mm-hmm. From you know, like the, the just DC with the stars around it. Yeah. And then, um, the cool thing they did with the swirl, like the like the universe swish, like mm-hmm. around it, that was really neat. This looks like they're trying to sell us like pharmaceuticals or blanket sets. <laughs> and I really, I feel like it's, it's, it doesn't look as bad with like the coloring. Yeah, as it it originally did in like that that press release they put out, mm. like it's not that bad with like all the different colors. And it's you yeah, know the the yeah. idea. Some of that stuff looks you know halfway decent. One of them looks like it's turning into a, a xenomorph from Alien. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I don't know, man. Like they go through changes so often with with uh-huh. the DC logo. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the last one, but I like I feel like I was just getting used to it. Well, the really thin, um, yeah, the little stars around it. Yeah, but I, I really like the old like superpowers like round. Bullet, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, blue border, stars on the side, mm-hmm. big DC letters. Know what you're getting. Yeah. You know what you're getting into. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, you're wearing their underwear. That's, that's what I want. <laughs> the underwear on the outside of the pants, bro. <laughs> this is what it tells you. That's what I want. It just, it seems like, uh, like not to gripe on it too much. I mean, it's, it seems like it's, uh, they, they got the intern and they were like, hey, you know how you use Photoshop? <laughs> like, yeah, I guess so. Make a new logo. I'll be back in 20 minutes. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think the, the whole uh, model of DC nowadays mm-hmm. is just to kind of get out there as soon as yeah. possible. We could always change it. Well, they're, they're doing, they want to do the, um, the socially aware thing you know and with the media and like i i don't think they've crossed over into neuromarketing yet where no. they they're telling us what we want before we want it no because that's definitely not the case they're not they're, yeah <laughs> <laughs> i did not i did not want another comic book about man bat and dead man yeah i didn't want those things <laughs> <laughs> i like that man though i do too you don't want that the man bat um what else looks like it's kind of like a little bit of a slow week for yeah news. I gotta say, there was uh, yeah, it was a really quiet week. Um, there was no real Marvel news. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- we had the big sellout this week with uh, profit, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, um, which is the return of the Rob Liefeld era. Uh, better, way better. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Because like I, for the life of me, um, I was doing, I was trying to do a little research. For the life of me, I could not remember what the original series, was. and I have, I have like most of them. The only uh. thing I remember about it was uh, I remember having about a thousand copies of number four because I remember going to like the very uh-huh. first um, convention I've ever gone to. Right. And someone had a box mm-hmm. of number four, like profit number four. He's like, you want them? And me and Bobby and I'm taking a bunch of them. Sure. And it's just like him with a knife against his face and just like mm-hmm. close up of his face. And I remember <laughs> it's, I started picking up when Platt came on. Yeah. And he was fighting a future version of himself wearing a mask called Crypt. Crypt. I like Crypt. Yeah. yeah. Everyone did. I think I think it was it, it, it kind of revealed that the young blood was young blood was, was uh controlled by the devil. Yeah. And it went this whole like apocalypse storyline and it was kind of the uh, Extreme Sacrifice, I think that's what it was called. That's what it was. Yeah. That's yeah. what I remember about Prophet. I remember that mm-hmm. like I remember like the veins and like the whole like <laughs> 
Yeah, the tough the, dude. The and face it, thing, the life field face hold together thing. That, which doesn't exist in real life. Like, no. I don't know what that where he got this idea for like a face protector. Like glue. Shastar Prophet <laughs> glue on your face. Uh, and uh, what's his name? A couple of people had it on Youngblood, right? I don't know. I'm sure they own. did. I'm, yeah, there's, there was a lot of like umpire stuff going on. Cable had that too. I think so. Yeah, at one point. Cable had the face thing. He's a big fan of, um, of like everyone talks about his pouches and everything like that and his shoulder mm-hmm. pads. But I think the... The umpire thing, like mm-hmm. making everyone look like they're about to like catch a ball, <laughs> and like wearing the, the you know the proper armor for it. Uh-huh. But he also did a lot. He loved the wolf, he loves the Wolverine mask. Yeah, he yeah. used that a lot, and he loves like uh, like ovals on people's faces. Yeah, yeah lots yeah. of face paint. He's got so many weird mm-hmm. fixations. He's a super creative dude. And it's so yeah. weird that he's back in the news. Like he's doing so much now. Yeah. Like he's really becoming like a go-to guy for DC. Yeah. Which tells you something about the company. <laughs> I think so. Well, you never know, man. Like the guy may have some brilliant ideas. And you think so? Yeah, I don't know, man. He's been around forever, and he started super young. You know, so he might be kind of like the the cagey veteran. I don't think that's what's going to happen. No. No, I, I I wasn't really impressed with the Hawk and Dove stuff. I um, I, I wasn't a fan of Infinite. And mm-hmm. now they're giving him writing duties uh, on three books right. in DC, Hawkman, uh, something else, and something else. They're going to involve a half-cyborg man from the future coming back in time to prevent an apocalypse. Well, they did make Hawkman more like Venom. Okay. So, Oromaki has the in for the 90s, uh, mm-hmm. 90s, 90s resurgence. <laughs> we do have it. There does seem to be a big need for, uh, for 90s stuff going on in DC. Yeah. 90s DC wasn't that great. No. no. And well, 90s Marvel wasn't that great either, but it was it was cool. You know, when you were a kid, it was cool. Yeah. Marvel yeah. Marvel Image was cool stuff. Yeah. But DC, no one really talked about DC. It was just had a bunch of shocking moments. It had, you know, Green Lantern, Superman, Batman. Those were the, the big moments. Yeah. Not too far off from where we are now. Pretty much. I can't really remember m- many, if any, DC, DC books I, I picked up besides Batman and... Uh, Possibly Green Lantern. Well, nineties nineties Green Lantern. I was a big fan of because I liked uh, I liked the Kyle Rayner and nineties Flash too because mm, that was the that was Mark Wade stuff and Wally West. You know, yeah. like that was when Wally West came aboard and they gave him like that cool uh, slick costume. Well, I remember they. I used to the only DC I would ever get. I would never go out of my way to buy it. I'd always go to the Toys R Us and they used to make those like big ten packs for like five bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like you get you always select it by what you saw on the front and the back. Yeah. So the those were usually like, the best ones. So mm-hmm. you get like. An X Men and like a Justice League comic, uh-huh. or like two X Men comics, and then the inside just filled with like Legion of Superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the porno three pack you buy at the, uh, <laughs> at, the at Penn Station. <laughs> yeah, I read a lot of stories that I would never like. Mm-hmm. I remember reading like uh, Justice League storyline, which they were a mess in the nineties. Yeah. They had like the Maxima, who mm-hmm. was like the she was like another version of Big Barda. Right. They had that guy Blood Rain with uh, R A Y N E, who was a black dude. Who had like a big jewel on his chest, and he was uh-huh. a mystery on who this guy was, <laughs> uh-huh. and everyone thought he was Red Tornado because his name was Blood Rain, uh-huh. and he turned out to be Martian Manhunter. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I mean, like that's that's always a go-to reveal. Where like, who is that mystery character? It's me. Martian Manhunter. He's got cookies. <laughs> got uh-huh. Cookies, baby. I, and like, it's so cheesy. I love, always love those bits of Martian Manhunter where yeah. they're like, I, I, he's mad. Like, I know it'll make him happy, and somebody will flip him an Oreo. <laughs> well, like, the first one, the first time I ever read that was uh, was Sandman. Yeah. When like the uh, when Sam was still like actively part of like the DC universe, it was mm-hmm. like one of the very first issues, like the Doctor Destiny storyline. Okay, and he uh, it's like him in a bathrobe, like mm-hmm. a Marshman Hunter in a bathrobe eating Oreo cookies. Mm. Do you love chocolate? I love chocolate. No chocolate on Mars, <laughs> man. No cacao trees. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see him uh, develop uh, lactose tolerance. <laughs> um, Damn you, America! That is a good. Is a great segue for our next bit. Uh, yes. um, we're gonna do a little thing. Uh, a few months ago, we did a uh, a creative team comic book shuffle between the two of us, and uh, you know, what story would you like to see, and what creative team would you like on it? Um, and we tossed each other a bunch of characters. We're gonna do the same thing for film and or TV, and maybe even serialized radio shows. Who knows? The uh, the idea slipped yeah. <laughs> <laughs> out right there. Something special. Um, and uh, we're gonna lead it off, man. And that was actually my one for you. Martian Manhunter. Ugh. <laughs> Martian Manhunter. All right, I have an idea for Martian Manhunter. TV show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes place in 1950 Chicago. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He is black jazz singer by by night, uh, private detective by day. Okay. Jim Jones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go go Jim Jones. So he he basically doesn't 
understand that he is Martian Manhunter. Okay. And he's see these sound like comic book pitches, but I think it's all right. I, I'm still going with it. Ca- cast it. Yeah. Uh, cast it. In 1950, as a detective and jazz singer, Martian Manhunter, I would have as <laughs> who? Ben Vereen. Ben Vereen. <laughs> I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna, who's what's his name? Uh, Harry Belafonte. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, he's, if he could work as like a younger man, he has yeah. a weird like young man. Makeup. He's like a thousand years old. <laughs> <laughs> he fell asleep in an interview not too long ago. Did he? Yeah. Uh, no, I would actually make it um, the father from Family Matters. <laughs> <laughs> Reginald Bell Johnson, jazz singer. It, that actually kind of works because he has like you know he's a trumpeter. Yeah, he's a trumpeter and he's mm-hmm. a private eye. And the private eye part of him is white, and the uh, <laughs> <laughs> who would play the white guy? Uh, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> Steve Buscemi and Harry Belafonte are both playing Martian Manhunter, <laughs> and Lou Ferrigno playing Mar- <laughs> when he's in the Martian version. Are all what? <laughs> Why? What? <laughs> uh, terrified of fire. <laughs> Right. He's an so, arson investigator. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> Lou Ferrigno as a <laughs> scrap <it>. everything. <laughs> scrap everything. It's Lou Ferrigno as a painted on green like la- <laughs> what do you call it? A Martian man out there with green uh-huh. body paint <laughs> right now uh-huh. in like modern day mm-hmm. Chicago mm-hmm. as an arson investigator. <laughs> <laughs> Your building is horrible not at cold. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh. At the, end, at the end of the case, you could be, it could be like a Kojak where, like, at the end of every episode, instead of lighting a cigar and saying, Who loves you, baby? <laughs> he just out. eats a bunch of cookies. <laughs> <laughs> or he freaks out, like, he forgets he always has, he's afraid of fire, and he, like, lights a cigarette and, like, loses it. He's <laughs> 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 just doing the Young Frankenstein bit over and over again. This is one thing, it's, it's one thing I, I, uh, I never understood because, like, in the, um, in the Golden Age, or, like, when Martian Manhunter was supposed to come to Earth. Mm-hmm. He was like a, a detective. Yeah. You know, and being a detective, you're surrounded, I feel like in the 40s or 50s, you're surrounded by dudes that smoke all <laughs> every day. <laughs> and like, <laughs> he's having a little panic attack every few minutes. He's so nervous. Like, he's like, what, what do we got here? What do we got here? <sighs> uh, so I got to step outside. It's, hot. it's too hot. It's too hot. I can't. I wish these guys would stop lighting <laughs> up their cigarettes. Everybody, it's 1942. Everybody's smoking everything <laughs> right now. He's smoking. He doesn't even know what to do with it. <laughs> it's a nervous. Because if you didn't smoke back then, you were like. You're a weirdo. You were a weirdo. A communist. Yeah, you were a weirdo, a communist, and you were like some kind of lip, limp-wristed uh, <laughs> socialist, I guess. All right, I got to give you one. I got to give All you right. one. Uh, I'm not going to be as good. <laughs> Who'd I have before? I want. How about Deathlock? Ooh, Deathlock. Like <laughs> For right. those who don't know, Deathlock is a time traveling okay. cyborg super soldier. <sighs> okay. Usually the body of a dead black man. I oh. know. I, I got. I know. Jean Claude Van Damme. He did that already. Yes, he did. Universal Soldier. Yes, he did. Uh, and All cyborg. Right. Honestly, I don't know why the. First casting choice I had pop into my head, Josh Holloway. Death lock. <laughs> <laughs> that laugh just shorted out my head. <laughs> um, uh, Josh Holloway, Sawyer from... Uh, I think I'm getting radio interference right now. Right. Uh, Death no. lock's about to die. No, no, no. no. Uh, Sawyer from... Um, Lost. From Lost. Would be an amazing death lock, I think. I think he would be with the long hair or no long hair. Uh, no, no long hair. Um, are you having? What is it doing? What is it doing? Having, what is it doing? I think I'll he's fix having, it. I think he's having a stroke. All right, I'll just talk into the microphone. Um, Sawyer from Lost with with no long hair. He has like a crew cut on one side. Um, he is a guy that accidentally. It's um, a TV uh, show or movie? This is or a. Studio? This is a. Uh, <laughs> this is a TV show. Okay. This is this is like a, a really terrible syndicated. <laughs> um, TV show, and uh, you'll have him get. It's not going to even go anything near the uh, the Deathlock franchise. It's, he's going to look like him at the end, mm-hmm. but I would have him be like a guy who just got out of jail, gets um, kidnapped by a major corporation, mm. sent into the future because they're experimenting on uh, no good nicks. <laughs> and they get, and, then and Josh Howe is definitely a no good name. And then he just um, 
everything good yeah uh thank you You're welcome. and um he uh he gets sent into the future and the future because his body couldn't handle it they made him a cyborg and they sent him back in time to investigate the company kind of like the miniseries yeah okay yeah all right I would watch it. So I'd watch it too. I'd watch it. And um, supporting cast would be really nobody from the Marvel Universe. Steve Rogers would be in it. Steve Rogers. Steve Rogers would be in it. Nick Fury would be in it. As the corpse. Uh, yeah. As I <laughs> always had a weird thing with Death Black. Mm-hmm. Right? I always believed because he had the American flag on his thing and he was mm-hmm. like a product of American uh, super soldiers right. um, science. I always believed that he was the corpse of Steve Rogers from the future. That's a cool story. I'd read that story. There's a story there somewhere. Yeah, I think you should write it. There's a lot of Deathlock stuff going on in uh, in Marvel nowadays. Yeah, well, Deathlock's like a really he's. I think he was the original Wolverine or the original Venom. You know. Yeah, yeah. He and he he looks like Eddie from uh, Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. Yeah. Uh, he there's a lot you can do with him. He's kind of a blank mm-hmm. slate, and you can always have someone else as Deathlock. You can always supplement someone like mind into Deathlock. You can mm-hmm. do a Wolverine. Inside of uh, Deathlock storyline, yeah, which would be bad. That yeah, it wouldn't any anybody in Deathlock would be good. Mm-hmm. They never uh, have they ever done a check, check Deathlock? I don't think so. Right, never. No, all right, never. That's something to look into. Marvel. They yeah. did a lot of Deathlock stuff with uh, the Wolverine stuff not too long ago. Yeah, Weapon X when Aaron started writing it. Yeah, that yeah. was that was cool stuff. Well, he built on a lot of the Uncanny X Force with that stuff. Yeah. Um. All right, you ready for yours? Yes. All right, you have to stick with with this title and do whatever you want and put anybody you want in it. Beast and the X Men. <laughs> Beast and the X Men. All right, it's uh, it's a movie. Okay, I'm confining myself into it. It's a movie. Not a miniseries. Not a miniseries. Nope. It's <laughs> it's gonna be three movies about Beast in various states of deformity. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one will be Big Hand Beast, but it's him trying out for the X Men. But it's a different reality. Okay. It's not each one is a different reality. But the twist is this is actually Dark Beast. Mm. Really? So it's Dark Beast uh-huh. and he goes back in time and he joins a different reality's version of X Men and it's all Morlocks. Wow. So you get <laughs> Caliban, uh-huh. Mask, uh Sunder. Uh-huh. Uh, Calypso, Callisto, <laughs> uh-huh. Calypso. Uh, so you got a lot of like the form, like gross people living in uh, Xavier's mansion, right? Uh, uh-huh. Hanging out with evil Dark Beast, <laughs> who's trying to kill them slowly, and then they find out that he's Dark Beast by the end of the first movie. Mm-hmm. And the second there's one, more movies. Oh, there's more <laughs> movies. <laughs> second one, he joins the Star Jammers and makes uh-huh. them the X Men. And I like the that. third one, he <laughs> finally meets Wonder Man and uh-huh. actually becomes a better human being and joins the Avengers, but he also calls them the X-Men. No matter where Beast goes, he calls them the X-Men. So he's so nuts that he's just like, to Call, me, my X-Men. To me, my X-Men. So Meow. Morlock, Morlock <laughs> Star Jammers, uh-huh. Avengers. Who would you have play Beast? Now, this is, this is, this is I'm assuming this is a trilogy. <laughs> this is a trilogy. What? <laughs> because, I'm man. the Beast. Manchego Cheese. Um, Who would I have play Beast? I'm going to go with Anthony Hopkins. Okay. (laughs) He'd be be a cool cool Dark Beast. I think he would be a cool Dark Beast. Yeah. I don't know how he's going to play the uh, the young version. The young bouncer beast. Jump, or jumping around. You <laughs> need <laughs> somebody who could jump. That dude could, could barely clear the room. You know who, <laughs> you know who I'd, I'd pick as, as like a young spry beast? Who? Tom Hardy. That would be good. Yeah. Tom would, Hardy, like like Bronze and Tom Hardy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. As like a circus strong man type dude. Yeah. That's hmm. a good beast. Okay. Yeah. Go right. for it. I like that idea, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's retarded. Uh, mm. Mine... Is Doom Patrol? Oh, because no one knows how to do Doom Patrol. Uh, I <laughs> probably don't know how to do Doom Patrol either. All right, Doom Patrol would be, um, it would definitely have to be a movie. Two movies. Two movies. Two movies. Like uh, uh, both. It's one one five hour movie split into two. Okay. All right. And um, I, a I can't really tell you who's on Doom Patrol. <laughs> You uh, got you got Niles Calder, the the wheelchair guy. The wheelchair guy. You got uh, what's his name? The Negative Man, right? The guy with the, the bandages. Mm-hmm. You've got Elastigirl, mm-hmm. Robot Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Mento or something like that. Okay. Um, ready? <laughs> you're, you're, it's your world. You can do whatever you want. You ready? <laughs> you ready for this? Yeah. Niles Calder played by, uh, I forgot the actor's name. He was uh, Dick Winters in Band of Brothers. Okay. Yeah, the guy in Homeland now. Yep, that yeah. dude. I have not watched it. I heard it's amazing. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be Niles Calder. Um, the dude with the bandages, Negative Man. Um, the guy who played Rorschach. Okay. All redheads so far. Uh, the ch- <laughs> all of my team's full of gingers. <laughs> um, the robot dude. Um, let's see. <laughs> who would I have play a giant? Benedict Cumberbatch. Goes, no. <laughs> that name has been in my head all week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Star right. Sherlock. So we got, uh, we got, we got the wheelchair guy. <laughs> we got this, this you, need, you need Elastigirl and you need, uh, Robot Man. Robot Man. All right, Elastigirl. That's I mean, Robot, Robot Man is the one that that matters. Elastigirl, you can just put like I'll put anybody in into that costume. But who? As long as they're hot. Um, I don't know. Anne Hathaway. There you go. Right, Anne Hathaway as Elastigirl and as Robot Man. Not somebody cool. Somebody cool and like giant. Kyle Drogo. Uh, <laughs> Kyle Drogo. Jason Jason Momoa. And uh, the story would be that they're the world's first superhero team that nobody knew about. And they got sent uh, into a mission in space, and they got frozen in space uh, from, I would say, from the 20s. Ooh. So that's why they're all weird. <laughs> they're the first <laughs> experiment in, into space. And uh, they're frozen in space, and they come crashing down to Earth, and everything's completely different. And they, they're, they, are, they show up on Earth right before the apocalypse is supposed to happen. You just stole my idea for uh for Vance Astro. Sorry. <laughs> my Vance Astro mini series. So that's why they're called Doom Patrol. Mm, I like it. And that's it. I like it. That's it. We'll but you done. can do that. I mean yeah. like if you're if you're trying to sell a property, mm-hmm. you can just say, Hey, I want to make a thing called Doom Patrol. Mm-hmm. It's uh, really loosely tied into it. And sometimes it works brilliantly. Like, I think it would work very well with they that. Call it Patrol of Doom. Patrol of Doom. But they don't uh, They don't end up uh, saving the planet and they get rocketed into space again. Oh, this is totally my Vance Astro story. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of Vance Astro story. One day. One day? Same All right. Uh, I guess this is going to be the last one. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Who could I throw at Jonathan to make an awesome movie? It could be an indie movie or mm. anything. Um, I'm not gonna throw Superman at you, but yeah, we did <clears> that last time. If you had to make your perfect Fantastic Four movie, who would it be? Oh, all right. For, I've been actually thinking about this a lot. Okay. Uh, first of all, it has to be a throwback movie. It has okay. to be 1960s. You know, uh-huh. the dawn of the the space program, the space race. Mm. Uh, you gotta have Reed Richards smoking a pipe, be kind of the pompous asshole. Mm. Um, gray on the sides. Gray on the sides. Mm-hmm. Uh, you gotta make Ben Grimm as like a barely sociable, like curmudgeon, <laughs> like taxi cab driver uh, <laughs> that hangs out with a bunch of kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, he they always made it like he was not that much older, but they always made him seem like yeah, super old. But they also made he's older than Reed, but Reed is like like a hundred years old and everybody. But I think that's I think that's kind of what's great about mm-hmm. about the Fantastic Four is that all of them are terribly delusional uh-huh. and that they're all living in their own like little world like mm. you know Reed is completely like a shut in like you know doing what he thinks is right and Thing is just like so out of touch reality it's right. like I'm a gumshoe. I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, rough and tumble. Trench coat and hat. Trench coat and hat is exactly what the way I'm going out today. Uh, <laughs> Giant Storm is just like a miserable, just terrible. Like I'm gonna mm. burn everything. Um, I hate everybody. Yeah. And, uh, and Sue Richards barely exists. Okay, she is a miserable girl. But mine would be like Kirby, old school, weird, like jumpsuit style. Mm. Uh, Fantastic Four things, but very bright and blue. Uh, I would have it as. I would do it as a as a movie. Mm-hmm. I would try the first one because I think it's hard to do. I think Hans Four is a very hard property. Um, I wouldn't do anything crazy with it. Uh, mm-hmm. My cast: Reed Richards would be. Oh, I want to say him so bad. I want to say John Hamm. Okay. I want to say John Hamm would be an awesome like. He's a good smoker. He could probably pull off smoking a pipe awesomely. Yeah, he would. And like if he he was in that shitty um remake of uh what was the one with Gort? Um like Yeah, uh, the Daily Earth stood still. Yeah, he yeah, would, yeah. he p- kind of played like a swarthy scientist dude. I think he would be good as him. Um I am going to go He'd also be a good uh Wyatt Wingfoot. 
who get you know who breaks into the base. No play, man. Why yeah. would put such a he's such a good name too? Yeah. Uh, thing would be, man. It's like I have a I like in the back of my brain I have like a perfect mm-hmm. thing like this really like squat like Pat Oswalt <laughs> if he worked out. <laughs> Character, uh-huh. but I can't put my finger on. I'm gonna go back to him. Jack Patton Oswalt. Yeah, help me out with this. Giant Storm. Mm-hmm. CM Punk. <laughs> I don't know why. That would be an awesome guy. That song. would be pretty good. Yeah, I think he would be pretty good as a as a Giant Storm. Mm-hmm. What about Sue Storm? Sue Storm, uh, Jessica Alba. No, <laughs> definitely not. I, honestly, like when when they started casting that first movie, um, I remember both of <laughs> us were flipping out because it should. I been, just totally uh, forgot that Jessica Alba already played Sue Storm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it would have flipped it, uh, both of us flipped out because it should have been Elijah Cuthbert in the original movie. Yeah, she, she looks exactly like yeah, Sue Storm. she does. Yeah, she does. Yeah, I would go with that. I would go mm-hmm. with Elijah Cuthbert. Um, thing Ben Grimm, tough man, it's tough. You can't do checklists, man. You can't cast checklists again. I would never check cast checklists in the first place. Really? No. Uh, his turn as uh, Vic Mackey, Curly, and the commission didn't do it for no, you. No, that, that's <laughs> enough. Like that's he's he's that dude. Mm. <sighs> Man, I'm trying to think of like crime films. I want to do. Uh, I want to do an old like a. If I can go back in time, I want like um, what's that dude's name? W. C. Fields. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, who is who's that British dude? You see the part? The Departed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah remember the uh, the guy who was like right underneath Jack Nicholson, the British dude. Um, oh yeah, the guy. Uh, what's his name? From Beowulf. Uh, from Sexy. Yeah, <laughs> Beowulf. Uh, from Sexy Beast. What's his name? Ray Winstone. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. want I want like him to like shave a few years uh-huh. and be, do like an American accent and be like the rough and tumble thing. That's a good thing. I drive these guys around. Yeah, <laughs> I hang out. He's the taxi cab <laughs> driver who brings them to the rocket, and he's like, "You want to come along?" He's like, "Yeah, I can fly a spaceship." I will. <laughs> Sir, you're not getting that fast <laughs> enough. I'm a pilot. So yeah, that's my perfect. I for the uh-huh. director, I would have. Ooh. They had a good one back then, back a while back. Uh, attached to the picture. Attached to the picture originally, and then and he was gonna do mm-hmm. a legitimate like nineteen sixties throwback movie. Yeah, but it just never panned out because they wanted to do like that crap. Would you go with? Um, I can't. I can't. Ugh, I forgot his name. We're both um, fried today. Fried. A little bit. If you and we're not. It's not even like hangover fried. It's no. just like tired fried. fried. Egg. Um, fried eggs. Yeah. Uh, the guy who uh, who did the Pink Panther movies. Blake, Hamba- Ed- Blake Edwards, hamburger, <laughs> <laughs> hamburger. Uh, Blake Edwards, he'd be good. Or um, <laughs> for some reason, what's uh, Aronofsky popped in my head? I think he'd make an he'd make <laughs> he'd make a really sad Fantastic Four movie. They, they all they all slowly fall off of something and, <laughs> <laughs> and have, all have heart attacks when the camera cuts. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like it. I, I I would say um, and Danny DeVito always pops into my head when uh, when somebody mentions a thing. Dave DeVito, yeah, because he's so stout. You <laughs> need somebody stout, you know. They just they make him look bigger. And that's that. That was like the whole thing of like if anybody read the Fantastic Four comics when they were kids, like the old ones, man. Like thing was tiny. He was like a little dude. Yeah, he was. He was like a troll, and everybody was like so much bigger than him. But he was so much stronger, and he was also like twenty five, and apparently the greatest pilot that yeah. ever lived. Um, or not even. He they were like he all. Had like air, he had like Air Force experience. Yeah, but they were all like kids. Like she was supposed. She was like like seventeen. Yeah, they're all teenagers. You know, Reed was like Reed was like the 19. only one who was like he was the one who was in college. Yeah, he was smart. Yeah, but he was in college with Ben. So Ben's like twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, how did how did uh. Ben go to school with Reed Richards and Victor Von Doom? D- no idea. Football scholarship. Football scholarship. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> it's a very illustrious school where they where they, where, <laughs> where they can afford the football scholarship and two like world class geniuses building a portal of hell. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really I really want that to come out in like a book where like Reed was like. I can't believe we went to college together. <laughs> like, Me neither. Me <laughs> 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 um, Yeah. All right. Fantastic Four. I guess that does it for that bit. It was a good bit. Can't really think of anything with the Fantastic Four. It's kind of rough, man. I wish I threw something. I wish I threw something else at you. Uh, like, me too. Uh, like, uh, ah, I should have said Justice League International, man. That would have been a lot of fun. Yeah. I had I had um, a few weird ones mm-hmm. that I didn't use. Um We'll get to them. We'll do another yeah. one of these. We'll do another one of these. We'll do another one of that. That is a gigantic. Whoa. All right. Uh, <laughs> I got to stop. Uh, I got to stop doing that. All right. Let's go to the books of the week. This week. Awesome books. Um, <laughs> Nothing is working out anymore. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we. Uh, oh, man. 
We're having a little. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Today's a <laughs> <the> day. <laughs> all, the <laughs> uh, all right, so we got. Uh, we're gonna hit you. My off hand with, is so hot right now. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shining a light in my face. Um, Thank you, Andrew. So, <laughs> anyway, this is um, one of the best shows we've ever done. I think so. Yeah, I'm very proud of the show. I'm I'm good with it. The Martian Manhunter stuff really like I'm gonna be thinking about that. <laughs> Forever. Anyway. I've always thought about doing a, like a uh, uh-huh. like a detective story jazz singer thing with him. My brother said um, Avery Brooks or uh, for Deathlock. <laughs> Avery Brooks, the captain from uh, Deep Space Nine. Oh, that was his only role yeah. ever. I remember who that is of all time. I'd work with that. Um, all right, so you know we had some some cool books this week. Uh, we narrowed it down to four really good reads. It was a lot of good 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 stuff this week. I'm gonna give a little uh, before we get started, like a little. Um, uh, a little uh, worthy mention to uh, I really like the the end of Superior. Yeah, yeah. Man, I, I hate that book. I know you hate that book, but like I get like I always get a little like choked up when I when I when I envision the end of Superman one where he's flying towards the camera and he winks. I hate that. Why? You like that? I love that. Uh, that you know what? It makes me feel safe. It that, makes me <laughs> <laughs> dude, that book was terrible. I uh. When I put that book down, I'm like, wow, this guy's put out a lot of crap in the last few years. <laughs> like, he did, like, from, like, the quality of, like, Civil War and, like, stuff like that, like, get, where, where'd you get that from? <laughs> it was behind the chair. <laughs> Kick-Ass 2 is terrible. Yeah. Um, it's not even done yet. I'm not looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nemesis was terrible. Mm-hmm. Superior went absolutely nowhere. Like, it was really, and, like, the fact that they did that mm-hmm. shit with the, uh, like, they show him, like, departing from Earth and just, like, hey. With, with the wake. <laughs> Everything's all right. I don't feel safe. I feel like my money's been ripped off. Well, I mean, when, not not. I don't feel safe because it's superior, but like at the end of Superman one, I, don't that's, like that. I love that. I, love I that hate pain. that. I ha- <laughs> I I like. I hate that pandering uh-huh. aspect of Superman. Unless he's snotty like he is now. Uh-huh. Like I really, that's the best thing I think about Fifty Two. The new Fifty Two is that he's a like mm-hmm. Superman's like the snide, like know it all. Yeah, yeah. Like play it up. Like play with that. I hate like the uh, the the pious like we you're like like I like you know hate. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> Like you should want to be like me, yeah, <laughs> Superman. Hey, it's it's no big deal. I'm good and I'm humble. I'm just going to the satellite, brother. Yeah, <laughs> just going around, just going around. I didn't like that. I, mean, I was not a fan of. I I superior. I, I did enjoy that. It was. He writes them as the movies. Thing. They're like movie pitches. Like yeah. they're perfect for like a film. Yeah, I'd watch that movie. I wouldn't watch that movie. I will watch that movie, but I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we got? Let's see. Uh, let's go. Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts number uh, one sixty nine this week. Dope. Um, really cool stuff. It's continuing the story with um them the like the evil team of Thunderbolts getting sent back in time, and they, they keep screwing up and they're going further and further back in time. Um, this one picks up where they're in medieval times in near Camelot. Yeah. Yeah. What's cool is that they get to really play with uh, constant redesign their comic their mm-hmm. costumes for every era they've been to. So you yeah, have, like the Victorian era of London, and then you have like you know the Dark Ages mm-hmm. with uh, with them now. Um, they're having a lot of fun with Boomerang at this. Yeah, a lot of fun with Santana. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of uh, with fun with Troll with, with uh, Troll. Yeah. Um, who'd have thought that they do something really uh, kind of. Um, Interesting with mm-hmm. Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Because yeah. Mr. Hyde was always like a poor man's like Solomon Grundy. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're really fleshing him out. And also the fact they gave him a British accent, which I think they've never established before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think it's a lot of fun with him. Yeah. It's cool. It's, it's some cool stuff. I always, uh, the, the feeling I get about this book, I wish it was a mature reader's book. I wish it was like yeah. a Max book because like there's so much stuff that's like borderline. Like you ca- you want to see the boob. You want to see boob come out. You want to see like real brutal stuff with Mr. Hyde. And it's there. It's, it's all, right there. Th- yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, right off camera. Yeah, it's like on the cusp of just like a Max book where, and it's extremely well written, you know? I, I still think my favorite moment was when they were in uh, the first time jump they had when they went to uh, mm-hmm. World War II and uh, Satana ended up banging out uh, Namor. Yeah. And like, he just climbs on top of him and he's like, yes. <laughs> so he was like, I'm pretty hurt right now. <laughs> She's like, oh, I got something yeah. that'll help you. Go in this bath and I'm going to sit on top of you. Uh, <laughs> but it's always a consistently like, it's really fun. It's very different from what kind of Thunderbolts has been before. Yeah. Um, it's gone through these different iterations of mm-hmm. either being like the Norman Osborn book uh, when Warren Ellis reestablishes, this is definitely a, f- a throwback back to like the uh, Kurt Busiek, kind of yeah, yeah, Baron Zemo stuff. Baron Zemo is kind of just circling mm-hmm. the outside of this book. You can feel like his yeah. his presence. Um, but dude, it's a fun, fun superhero book, yeah. and never disappoints. And every issue always is stacked. 
it's an awesome team book too. It's it's a great team and it's a weird team. And I also with the costume stuff, I really like what they made Fixer because they're in Camelot. So like half of his face is like armor. Yeah, and like his he has like a cannon arm. Yeah. underneath the cloak. It's really cool stuff. They encounter like Merlin and uh, and King Arthur. Arthur in the night, and uh, like every issue has like a pretty good reveal. You know, so the reveal in this is they get kidnapped by Merlin. And not, not kidnapped by Merlin, but they get like imprisoned by Merlin, and there's like a troll talking to him, and he's like, oh, "Don't you know where you are? You're in the Dungeons of Camelot. This is where like everybody who ever guarded a bridge, <laughs> guarded a pot of gold, <laughs> any mythical creature is here." And then like you know the the shot is of like you have demons and trolls and like crazy looking animals like just hanging out, and it's stuff to supply Merlin with his uh, with his enchantments. He's such a dick. Yeah, Merlin's always a dick. Mm-hmm. And this is cool. It's also like a little weird answer to, um, like Marvel's answer to uh, Demon Knights. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it rocks, dude. Yeah. And and we're going to 170, so we're probably getting another big issue from them. Yeah, next issue is probably going to be major. And then you know, it's it, it's it's Thunderbolts has always been a consistently good book. And it's a big testament uh-huh. to the, to the amount of different characters that Thunderbolts have, have yeah. covered, um, and the mm-hmm. fact that not too long ago they established a, a whole new team, mm-hmm. and then they established this whole B team, which has taken over the book. Right. The uh the cool thing again like a, a good comparison between Marvel and DC when it comes to stuff like this is that uh, Marvel is a really good habit of putting their B list characters in separate universes within separate books mm-hmm. and then when it's ready to reintroduce them they'll come back yeah. you know and you'll be you, it's not like people are forgotten you know like there's stuff rotating you know you have this you have uh, villains for hire mm-hmm. you know and you have like a lot of b-listers there you have um even battle scars you'll get like yeah. a lot of like b-list dudes of the last issue he uh it was the serpent society yeah the uh, serpent, serpent squad yeah. serpent squad showed up and yeah. um you know it's, it's it's cool stuff man if anybody uh wants to pick it up parker's run was for the past maybe a couple of years yeah, man. Uh, came um, back with the after uh, the beginning of the hero, the Age of Heroes, right? The Heroic Age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with when Luke Cage was still the leader of the team, right? Not Heroes Are Born. Not Heroes Are Born. <laughs> Not this book. And I think I think uh, some of them are collected in trades up up at this point. It's a good fun read. You don't really have to know any backstory about these dudes. Yeah. Uh, let's go with Moon Knight. Let's go with Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Uh, I would say my second favorite book of the week. Oh, I love this book. Yeah. Great cover too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have uh, Moon Knight completely kind of unraveling in this, mm-hmm. uh, and basically asking the best named sidekick in a long time, Buck Lime, yep. uh, to develop uh, a Captain America shield, mm-hmm. a set of Wolverine claws, and web shooters for him, mm-hmm. just because he, you know, he wants and needs these things. Yeah. And Buck Lime starts to piece together, like, all right, you're a paranoid schizophrenic with multiple personality mm-hmm. disorder. Uh, you're doing all these things. Are your personalities really <laughs> these dudes? Big, huge fight mm-hmm. during that whole narrative right. between uh, what's his, what's the dude's name? Count Nefaria. Count Nefaria and versus Echo and, and Moon Knight mm-hmm. round two. Uh, sadly, it looks like Echo is uh murdered. blown away and yeah. murdered. And what's amazing is you get the you know internal monologue of a uh, dialogue of a uh, Cap, of Cap yeah. Wolverine and Spidey inside of Moon Knight's head. And basically, Wolverine loses it and kills Captain America and Spider Man. Yeah. And basically, Moon Knight's having his own moment of like berserker rage. He becomes the dominant personality. It's so uh, cool. It's so so cool. The last page is an awesome like throwback to uh, to Wolverine berserker rage because it's him lunging at Count Nefari with like the claws out. Yeah, man. Know? And it's Moon Knight. It's crazy ass Moon Knight. And if you're not reading this book. You're an idiot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get down on a business card and <laughs> some flyers and some Everything stuff. that we talk about, you should be reading. And some Even sl- if it's shit. <laughs> and some slam bing bongs. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I really enjoyed the book, man. And it's it's such a cool book. And I feel like not not enough people are picking it up because Moon Knight has a bad stigma, as well it should, that it was not never that great to begin with. And yeah. this is the best iteration of Moon Knight since ever, I think. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. so. I mean, like even when Bennett was on this book earlier, mm-hmm. Uh, when they did the David Finch uh, relaunch, yeah. this is like what Bendis strives at. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's him and Malia of doing uh, like a Daredevil type book. They right. made Moon Knight into a very very gritty character. Mm-hmm. It he's a character that's mentally disturbed, just like Daredevil is. Right. Um, you get great action sequences. You got a different uh, locale. You know, in uh, the underworld of L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, best name sidekick in a long time, Buckline, Buckline. X Shield uh, mm-hmm. dude. Um, Awesome book. It's real cool stuff, and like the 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 interaction between um, Mark Spector and uh, Buck Lime is the fact that 
you have, you know, he's kind of like along, Buckle is along for the ride. He's mm-hmm. like, I'm this XO, you're paying me a, like a, 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 a buttload of money to do all this stuff for you. And um, there was that one bit where uh, he uh, he's talking to him and he's like giving him the weapons and he's like, uh, so, uh, you know, like Spidey's uh, webs. And he's like, I thought this was like a national secret. And he was like, it is, but you know, like you gave me a ton of money. He's like, what is this for? And he's like, oh, I'm, an, I'm an Avenger. He's like, no, you're not. And he's like... I'm a secret Avenger, <laughs> which is the truth. He's yeah. on the secret Avengers and Buckleheim's like, all right, man, you're a psychopath. I get completely nuts. I, you, you got a good heart though. <laughs> <laughs> I like your style yeah. and you pay me a lot of money. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, There's going to be some cool stuff going down the line. Uh, next book, which we were looking forward to for a while since it was advertised. Um, it was a resurgence of a nineties character from 1993 was the first ap- appearance of this dude almost 20 years ago. Um, Rob Liefeld created him. We talked about him a little bit before. Uh, Profit number one, also labeled as Profit 21, yeah. um, came out on Wednesday from Image. And it's, you know, this huge 90s throwback character, completely different story, completely insane space heavy metal story. Yeah, man. That's what it feels like. It feels like you picked up a, because it's number 21, mm-hmm. it kind of feels like you're along for the ride and the story's been going on for a while, which it right. has. But it's basically him coming, Prophet coming out of a like a space capsule on Alien World, uh, mm-hmm. fighting a bunch of creatures. It's very very exotic. Uh, he ends up banging a weird alien. Uh, he's puking up, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, live ammunition. Yeah. Um, it, dude, it rocks. But it, it definitely has that feel of something foreign, something very alien, mm-hmm. something strange. It's a cool. It's it's like a cool um, like mission. Yeah, you know, because you don't know, you don't know, you don't really know what the mission is, and he shows up, and you know, he starts surviving. He's like a soldier, you know. You you get the idea that this guy's some kind of like crazy future soldier, um, but you also get the the sense that he showed up on an Earth that was taken over by a bunch of crazy ass aliens. Yeah, you got that. Yeah, I didn't think of that. And because um, he's like, oh, people don't look like they do anymore. Like these guys don't look like they do anymore. Like everybody's evolved. Mm. So I feel like he's been in like suspended animation for a very long time, and. Uh, I guess you're gonna find out what the mission is and why he had sex with that crazy alien. And he did it pretty uh, like a pro. Yeah, he he really uh, he put that alien. Yeah, <laughs> he got <laughs> it in there. It's a really nutty book. Um, you know, you got it. it's uh, Brandon Graham is doing the story and art is uh, by uh, Simon Roy, and uh, it's really tremendous Very stuff, good. man. The art's amazing. Yeah. I mean, the, del- the the delivery of the entire package is amazing, yeah. but uh, the art really is mm-hmm. something special. It's kind of that weird, like, uh, Mobius, European, almost, like, flat uh, main character. Yeah. Lots of, like, GF Darrow type backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Really, really, really cool book. And issue number one just came out. So uh, you should go check it out. Side note with that book also was the very first book I've, I've bought on Comixology's app on uh, the iPad. Oh, yeah. And it's really pretty. Because yeah. they have a guided view, mm-hmm. which kind of brings you pound by pound instead of watching one whole page. Uh-huh. Um, and it's very, very effective for a book mm-hmm. like this, which is very, it comes across as very uh, flip booky and animated. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. very, very cool. Mm-hmm. It is, man. Like, Image image is doing so well with these creator books. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Glory's you know. coming next. Blood okay. Strike. Uh, all of, pretty much all the extreme properties. Youngblood mm-hmm. also. Youngblood's yeah. come back. All of them. Yeah. If you put them in the right hands, man, they'll like you can you can give any awesome writer anything and they'll turn into gold. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'll give you two challenges. Oh yeah, troll and bad rock. Troll, they actually did a good job with. Yeah. Almore did a really good job with him. Uh, but bad rock, I think, is a, a very tough character. Bad rock's tough, man. You'd have to make him He's just a shitty character. I would have him be working in a uh, bad rock theme brothel. Brad like, Rock, yeah, a little like, boy, man. That's like, disgusting. No, he's not. He's a little boy. No, nah, but like you know, you age him. Like he hit, he he became a drug addict and he hit the lowest point in his life. Okay, um, he's working at a theme brothel and <laughs> that's it's like like Shaft shows up and he's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm Shaft. <laughs> <laughs> or Shaft runs the place, maybe. They were remember when they do you remember when uh, they did this thing with Young Blood where uh, it was like supposed to be time has passed. And mm-hmm. Shaft has like a thyroid problem. I don't and remember. He's, this. Really, he's like he has an eating problem where he's like his metabolism isn't working as uh-huh. well as he used to, and he eventually turns to like fat Shaft. Half really? Of the story. Yeah. I don't remember who is writing this. I don't remember. That. I think didn't Miller take uh, Mark Miller take a run at Youngblood? He is. He did like two issues, and those are my favorite ones I've ever read. Those are the gross ones. Yeah, that was yeah. where like uh, like Cabal's getting a blowjob, but like Milestone no. and. 
They were just like in jacuzzis being like. It's Wolverine and Cyclops. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. It's gross. Yeah, it's gross. Uh, <laughs> but I was looking forward to it. I was uh, I was behind it. If you could, uh, if, if if I think you can really do some cool stuff with the extreme universe. I think so. I want to see uh, who's a, a diehard from Youngblood. Favorite character. You know, really cool. He could, they could make a really cool story with he him. He had my favorite of the Rob Liefeld design things, mm-hmm. which was like the uh, the segmented cyber arm. Uh-huh. But he did like it was kind of covered up where there was like poking out of uh, like the costume. So right. he had like, you know, the bicep is exposed, but the rest of the arm is not exposed. Mm. And then uh, he also had those weird like armpit things that Lightfield likes to do. Oh, yeah. That was my like, other favorite thing. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the like uh, snakes, the armpit the snakes, snake, the snake <laughs> suspenders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is serving no purpose because nobody's wearing backpacks. And then <laughs> he did the whole thing, which which is like I think he's one of the first people to do it. Mm. Uh because Die Hard wore the full face mask, mm. how he'd have the rip at the like from the nose down. Yes, yeah. Where he'd have like the the chin exposed. Battle damage. Yeah, battle damage. That was battle damage back then. Mm-hmm. Nobody. I feel like you know in the nineties you're like, oh, I'm a kid. Battle damage. This no is one intense. gets tense. Um, Spider Man just gets dirty. But now battle battle damage in comic books is so real. It's yeah. like almost too real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, man. Next book, I would say this is my this was my book of the week, man. Yeah, me too. Uh, Batman number five. Loved it. What a crazy issue. This is uh this is leading into the, the next uh mm. big Batman detective uh crossover. Yeah. Which is gonna deal with the Court of Owls. But the whole thing is like one of my favorite topics of Batman is someone breaking Batman's mind. Yeah. Uh the whole entire issue takes place inside a gigantic maze with uh that's he's been kind of captured by this court of owls. Mm-hmm. And he's uh, trying to figure out where he is, and he's constantly going to the same area over and over again, which is a giant, like mm-hmm. in the center of the the maze, which is a giant white owl. Right. Um, he has a vision of seeing his parents. Mm-hmm. It's very psychological and really messed yeah. up. And they, Greg Apulo does something. Well, he continually impresses me with every issue. Mm. Apparently, he's very dissatisfied with his with uh, his relationship with Scott Snyder, which really? is very surprising. Uh but he does that really cool thing with with him, where he has uh, the one eye hole of uh, his mask is busted, so yeah. he has a big round crazy eye. Yeah, he looks <laughs> awesome. He's the exposed eye, the exposed bloodshot eye. Yeah, he looks. And yeah. He looks like he hasn't slept, and he's really crazy and, and nuts. And he's clearly his teeth are like kind of half knocked out. And yep. like, what well, like the thing I really dug about this issue is, um, so you read this digitally, right? No. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, so I don't know if it was the same, but. Um, the panels are upside, pages are yes. upside down. Yeah, you did have to turn them. Yeah, so you have you're going through the Batman story. You're following him. He's going through this this insane owl labyrinth, and all of a sudden, you know, like the page kind of flips, and you're reading it like um like side to side, mm-hmm. but like holding it like a you know like a like a sideways newspaper or a sideways comic book because it's a comic book, and then you know it'll turn upside down, and it's kind of like it's spiraling into Batman's crazy psyche. You know, like he's looking into rooms and he's finding owl people. Owl people come out of his parents, his dead parents, and uh, the court of owl people look yeah. so awesome too with the masks. <clears throat> they do, and then uh, you have the uh, <clears throat> like Excuse it, me. like it. Uh, pardon, it culminates with uh, with Batman getting stabbed up by Talon by Talon, which mm-hmm. is like the enforcer for uh, mm-hmm. the court of owls. It's 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 they're playing with this whole idea of the court of owls being this. Uh, this like secret organization that kind of existed before Batman and mm. it led Batman to believe that this never existed, um, that it was always a, f- a folktale. Yeah. Uh, but now he's realizing that he's been wrong and that he knows nothing about uh, mm. this era of Gotham. Because um, a big part of this is the history of Gotham, yeah. which in turn plays a big part of you know his history with uh, his parents, that he doesn't know that they were probably part of something like this. Yeah. Some people were complaining that this is a little bit too close to like the Black Love storyline. Yeah. But in all honesty, if you really went that route, you could mm. make them one big, you know, black love, Corvallis, happy family. Could be the same thing. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you can you could tie it in kind of creatively and, and cheesily. I'm a big fan of cheesy ideas because uh, how would an owl sit on your hand? With a black glove, <laughs> it would have been awesome if I had a black, like a black leather glove right there. <laughs> dude, dude. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I want to bring back the whole uh, mm-hmm. aspect of just wearing one black glove, and then <laughs> like Kane, yeah, <laughs> just one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude, it's a, a great, mm-hmm. great, really enjoyable. Scott Snyder yeah. has such a good idea on what to do with Batman. Mm-hmm. Uh, really unique voice, uh, especially if you read this against. Detective Comics. It's a very different book. Yeah. Um, and the voice between uh, Dick Grayson and Batman is mm-hmm. is completely you know evident. You can yeah. t- 
tell the difference between um, him writing both characters. And this is a seasoned Batman cracking. Yeah. Like one of my favorite storylines of all time was uh, Batman the Colt. Yeah, yeah. Where he just like he cracks up. He like begs mm-hmm. for his life. He loses it. Um, and those are the moments that make uh, if his greatest you know tool is his mind mm-hmm. uh, to see it broken is always something that's uh, yeah. pretty tremendous same thing as bat is uh, as spider-man putting on his black costume or yeah crying in a graveyard uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh despite losing it um it, like i i really i really like the, the there's like a one touching moment too in this where um uh, the, the bad signal is on fire on the uh oh, on, the, right. on the roof of um the gotham gotham central or whatever and uh damien's like turn it back on and they're like all right kid take it easy like just please do it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And also the fact that they, the reason why it burnt up is because Jim Gordon mm. refused to turn it off. Because right. Because he has not answered it yet. Yeah. So they know Batman's out there. They don't know what's happening. They He's get, in a gigantic maze. He's in a maze somewhere. And I want to know where this maze is in, in Gotham. Like, you know Batman's going to come out of this in one piece. But the fact that Snyder makes you really um, think about how he comes out of it in one piece is, like, the, I think the mark of a great Batman story. Is Batman's the most undefeatable character ever written. Yeah. You know, like, he'll always come through everything with flying colors, you know. Plus, you know, the fact that uh, this dude Talon has mm-hmm. beaten the crap out of him every single time. Yep. This yeah. is like the third confrontation with him. He just yeah, he did stab him in the back, mm-hmm. but he has gotten the drop on him over and over again. Yeah, great stuff, man. It's, it's, really it's really solid stuff. Batman stuff. Five issues in, man. Go pick it up, everybody. If you're a Batman fan or not, you're not gonna have a choice. No, you're just gonna have. This is all we're gonna talk about is Batman now. Batman, Batman, Batman. <laughs> That's it. Um, I think uh, I think we're good. All right. So that about wraps it up for tonight's behind the counter. I'm Rich Stambolian. I don't know who I am. I know I've used that before, but I really don't know who I am today. Thank you.